I, I was born Catholic, uh -huh. raised that way until age 11 oh. or so. And I can I just sign it? I'm just going to sign now. It, and, uh, and then as I started learning about the universe, um, the, what I was being taught became less and less relevant to anything I cared about. And uh, the, now what's interesting is that 40% of scientists in America are religious as measured by the following, and which, because don't measure whether you go to church every week, because people, some, some people go to church just for the social scene yeah. or for the cupcakes. Yeah. You want to ask a question where it's meaningful when someone says they're religious. So the question you ask is, do you pray to a personal God to then, who would then intervene with, with, with uh, life and society? And if you do that, you're, you're religious. There's no, that's, that's a clean way to do that. 40% of American scientists answer yes to that question. That includes physicists, astrophysicists. There's a range among them. Uh, engineers and mathematicians are a little higher. They're up around 60%. Astrophysicists, uh, physicists, biologists are lower. They're down around 25. But it averages 40. Now, here's the difference. Those who are productive scientists and answer yes to that question do not go to the Bible as a source of their science. The Bible is just another part of their life. It's their spiritual part of their life. Yeah. And they do their science in their science books. You get into problems when people try to get science out of the Bible and then influence the science curriculum in a science classroom. Right. That is a whole other thing. It's like saying that, that the that, earth is only a thousand years old. Exactly, well, 6,000 years old. Yeah. That's a whole other thing happening in America right now that would undermine the science curriculum. By the way, science and religion have been coexistent forever. Yeah. The difference is, there's, there's no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school door, telling the preacher what to cheat. That's never happened. And but you find people today, um, religious fundamentalists typically, knocking, trying to knock down the science classroom, trying to tell the science teacher what to teach. And that's, and I, I cry foul when that happens. We've had this happy coexistence forever. And so, uh, so those who are, are religious are, those aren't the ones saying the Earth is six thousand years old. Here. So you're not uh, moving Kansas, is no, <laughs> or if I we do, gotta, I gotta. We gotta go. No more there you go. Okay, I'm gonna run. Is Gravidon discovered yet? Is what? Is what? Gravidon? No, it's still not discovered. It's still not okay. discovered. The last. Uh, there's a good book on that called Einstein's Unfinished Symphony. Okay. It's all about the search for gravity waves and gravity. Thank you so much. Uh, did I sign that? Yet? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Thanks. Okay. Great. Uh, I, I, I can walk. <laughs> I have a special pen for this. All right. Here. So I said, beautiful launch, beautiful day. I said in my update, status update, and I said, Godspeed, Atlantis astronauts. Well, in came this one. I thought you were an atheist. Why could you use such a word? Not a, it's like, <laughs> then someone else said, actually, it says right here that he's agnostic. This word, so this became the subject in the thread. I had to jump back in, and I said, Godspeed was the banner headline the day that John Glenn was put into orbit back in 1962. And since then, it has been an iconic phrase deep within the culture of the aerospace community. If you're religious, it means God be with you up there. And if you're not religious, it's just being culturally honest about how aerospace people communicate with each other. And then I posed the question. I got this award from the American Humanist Association. So this, like, these are people who, like, cross off the word God in every dollar bill that comes through their possession. This is like an energy level that I can't even imagine having. So, so I said, so I said, you know, because they were upset about this too. And I said, well, how many people here have ever used the word goodbye? All the hands went up. I said, well, goodbye comes from God be with you. Ooh, we didn't know that. That's what a goodbye comes from. It's a contraction of God be with you. And when would you say that? When you left the city gates and had to go between cities in the dangerous countryside where you might get mugged or robbed or raped or worse. So you say, God be with you to protect you on your journey. Well, we don't have city gates anymore. We have space. So God's speed is the, is the counterpart to that expression because it's speed that's going to kill you going into orbit. So I find it a fact. So I'm okay with that. There's an interesting cultural history in the community of, of, of aerospace. And so that's why I can't claim myself I can't agree to the claims by atheists that I'm one of that community. I don't have the time, energy, interest of conducting myself that way.
I'm perfectly happy going to see the rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar. I have Handel's Messiah on my iPhone, along with Bach's B minor mass and some of my favorite bits of music. This is what I do, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with having religious people who live all around me. I, I'm not trying to convert people. I don't care. We're in a religiously pluralistic society. Most of what accounts for the immigration waves into this nation were people fleeing religious persecution in their hometown. And no one will deny the richness of this country as a product of the immigration that unfolded. I'm okay with that. Just keep it out of the science classroom. That's my little dog. Maybe it's a poodle. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a... <laughs> <laughs> so you ask me if I'm agnostic, I'm agnostic. And it's more that I don't really care. I, I don't, I don't want to have to spend all this energy, but I keep getting called out into the boxing ring, largely against my wishes. We have actually moved quite a distance from that compared with 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, the era of the Inquisition and this sort of thing. And so, so to say that it has such a grip it has a fraction of the grip that it once did on the operations of human conduct and of society. So the real question is, if implicit in that is, given what we know of science, why would religion still have any grip at all? Not to, why does it still have a big grip? Because it's not a big grip when you look um, in, the, in the, the developed world. So, in fact, most of Europe are just, you know, their whole countries where religion has essentially disappeared entirely. And the countries are not, the, the countries are not full of violence and, you know, it's just the assumption that you have to be religious to be moral is a false one. It's empirically false because you just look around in places where that's the case. So, um, so, so, so that's one fact. And we, pull away from that a little, there's plenty of what goes on in religious texts that has tremendous value to how to think about life and how to treat one another. Uh, in fact, uh, Jefferson created what was essentially what you can think of as the Jeff Thomas Jefferson, the Jefferson Bible. I don't know if you ever heard of this. He went through the Bible, and I think both the Old and the New Testaments, and he crossed off everything that was sort of mythical, magical, uh, things that clearly violated known laws of nature, and kept the rest and said, here is the, the stuff of the Bible that will, should have value to any modern person going forward. If you look at people who are religious today who are not in conflict with science, they have viewed their religious texts as a spiritual something that gives them spiritual support, not as a science textbook. The, the, inter, the, the conflict in society is when you have those who are still religious who want to use their religious text as their access point to understanding the natural world. And persistent efforts of the past to make that happen have just simply failed. The, the, the Bible does not work as a science textbook. In fact, Galileo knew this, and he himself was a religious man. He's famously quoted as saying, the Bible tells you how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. <laughs> and they're going to say, aha, those scientists have discovered God, because God, dark matter, is what holds this universe together. Was that a question? <laughs> it's a statement. You know, you know they're going to so, say that. So, the history of discovery, particularly cosmic discovery, but discovery in general, scientific discovery, is one where at any given moment there's a frontier. And there tends to be an urge for people, especially religious people, to assert that across that boundary into the unknown, lies the handiwork of God. This shows up a lot. Newton even said it. He had his laws of gravity and motion, and he was explaining the moon and the planet. He was there. He doesn't mention God for any of that. And then he gets to the limits of what his equations can calculate. So I don't, can't quite figure this out. Maybe God steps in and makes it right every now and then. That's, that's where he invoked God. And and Ptolemy, 
he, he, he bet on the wrong horse, but he was a brilliant guy. He formulated the geocentric universe with Earth in the middle. This is where we got epicycles and all these, right. all this, the machinations of the heavens. There was still a mystery to him. He, he looked up and uttered the following words. I, when I trace at my pleasure the windings to and fro of the heavenly bodies. These are the planets going through retrograde and back. The mysteries of the earth. When I trace at my pleasure the windings to and fro of the heavenly bodies. I no longer touch earth with my feet. I stand in the presence of Zeus himself and take my fill of ambrosia. What he did was invoke, he didn't invoke Zeus to account for the rock that he's standing on or the air he's breathing. It was this point of mystery and in gets invoked God. This over time has been described by philosophers as the God of the gaps. Mm -hmm. if if that's how you, if that's where you're going to put your God in this world, then God is an ever receding pocket of scientific ignorance. If that's how you're going to invoke God, if God is the mystery of the universe, these mysteries, we're, t we're tackling these mysteries one by one. If you're going to stay religious at the end of the conversation, God has to be more to you than just where science has yet to tread. So to the person who says, maybe dark matter is God, if the only reason why you're saying it's because it's a mystery, then get ready to have that undone. I don't, I don't have an issue with what you do in the church, but I'm going to be up in your face if you're going to knock on my science classroom and tell me that i got to teach what you're teaching in your Sunday school, because that's when we're going to fight. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school door, telling the preacher, that might not necessarily be true. That's never happened. There are no scientists picketing out front of churches. There's been this coexistence forever. So to have the religious communities knocking down the science door, there's something wrong there. And I think back to Al-Ghazali and the 12th century and the fall of that intellectual empire and it's got me scared in america anyway um i read a book constellation of philosophy the main guy boethius is condemned to death he has everything taken from him all he has is his reason and his sense of self not even that but he attempts to console himself to this execution by reasoning that the world has order that there is something that keeps things together. And he uses his reason to try and get to the root of why he should be at peace at death. The problem is, his source of origin is a belief in God. What would you do? Well, I, I don't know if I fully understand the question. I do know that uh, if he's about to be executed. Uh, How about you are about to be executed? Oh, I'm about to be executed. You have nothing except your knowledge and your, your knowledge of science, your experience. I would request that my body in death be buried, not cremated, so that the energy content contained within it gets returned to the earth so that flora and fauna can dine upon it, just as I have dined upon flora and fauna throughout my life.